Hello and welcome to Delightful, Delicious, to Lovely. Welcome to my channel where today I shall be making a vegan Chinese eggplant. The significance of this dish is um, that it's from, ooh, get out of your fly. It's from five years ago on my blog um, and it remains the second most popular recipe or most clicked on recipe of my entire six years on the blog with the exception of one recipe which happens to have meat in it. I had a meat eating boyfriend back then and he requested that I make him chicken spaghetti. I'd never had chicken spaghetti. I had to kind of wing it. It's basically spaghetti with Velveeta and some Rotel which is spicy fire roasted tomatoes and chicken. Velveeta, spicy chunky tomatoes, chicken over pot, like a mac and cheese kind of a thing really, but with spaghetti. Uh, I couldn't even try it. He said it was great, and I have to just believe him. That is by, by, like, by a million hits the most popular recipe on my entire blog, which is super frustrating because I've never even fucking tasted it. So, and also, it a, was a pescatarian, then vegetarian, then vegan blog. So to have a chicken dish be the most popular fucking dish on there is galling. Um, but this is the second most popular. The first time I made it, I made it with a lot of oil. I got a lot of complaints about how much oil was in it. And I also made it in stages. I cooked the eggplant and set it aside. I cooked the onions and stuff and set it aside. Then I cooked the, a sauce and, I set it, and then I combined it all at once at the end. I'm going to just try to make it all in one pan all at once. And that way I can wait, cut down on the oil. And I don't see why I should have to, um, you know, keep taking it out of the pan. So that was a good, healthy tablespoon of sesame oil. I'm going to let it get warm. At my feet is my new foster, Lucho. Lucho, you want to say hi, Luchos? Come here, baby cakes. Come here. Come here. I'm not going to hurt you. This is Lucho. Lucho comes to me. See his little face? He got mauled by dogs in, in Uruguay. And they were unable to save his muzzle. So he has top of his face is chopped off. After a month of try, trying to save it, they could not. He's a good boy, though. He's happy. Hi. He's good. He's, he's a high baby cakes. He's a good boy. He gives kisses, and he likes to sleep in the bed, and he can eat okay. He even tries to chew on bones and plushy toys and stuff, but there's no top to his mouth, so he basically just pushes them around with the bottom of his jaw. Um, he's climbing out my leg right now. Uh, he follows me everywhere. He sleeps in the bed. He plays with my other dogs. He is a wonderful, wonderful boy. I'm thinking he's between, he looks young, three or three or five years old. Um, he's got really long, soft, really fluffy fur. He's a beautiful boy. All right, to this I'm going to add one large chopped onion. Woo! And the eggplant. This is two kind of medium-sized eggplants that I diced into a small dice. Lucho is going to make somebody a very happy person. He, he's a, he loves my dogs. He loves all people. He bonded with me really quickly. He follows me everywhere I go in the house. He loves food. He can smell. He smells, he smells around and then he pees. He's actually wearing that diaper, that belly band right now. Not because he's incontinent, but because my older boy, Dexter, is incontinent and dribbles pee everywhere that I often don't see before it dries up and therefore my house smells like pee. I can't really smell it but dogs certainly can and Lucho's walking around thinking that it's a free-for-all in this house and you can just fucking pee anywhere you want which I prefer he did not do. So, so I, initially I cooked this for eight minutes, the eggplant, and set it aside but it's the whole process. It's gonna get mushy. I'll give the onions and the eggplant a little bit of time to cook and to get soft. So yeah, Lucho. Lucho, I could show you a little video while this is cooking down of Lucho playing with Hayden, my foster fail, my beefy Frenchie. Um, I'll show you that right now. You can watch him play. And poor Moxie, watch, and there's two of them. One of them gets a little slow motion chunk in the middle, and another one has Moxie get body checked really, really. She screams out, ah! she gets, you see her fly out of, out of frame. Later on, a few seconds later, she walks back into frame perfectly fine, but she's lucky because there's a crack in between my deck and the yard there. She could have fallen in. She went, she went flying there like a rocket.
Okay. It's only been a few minutes. Things aren't really moving too fast, but I feel like liquid, I can cook it down with the, with the sauce in there. It might be better. So to this, I'm going to add a crushed, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of crushed red pepper. That's optional. If you don't like spicy food, don't add that. I'm going to add three tablespoons of um, sesame seeds. As you can see, I don't measure things very well. And I'm going to add, well, fuck, I don't have any garlic. Hold on. Garlic. I'm going to add about six cloves of minced garlic. One. Two. I said this before. I'll say it again. Apparently black dogs, what was that for? Five. Six. And I'm going to get the stuff out of the inside here too. There's no reason it shouldn't be in there. Um, I said it before, I'll say it again. Black dogs have an especially hard time getting adopted. I don't know why people have a prejudice against them, but they do. So Lucho has a double whammy going against him here. That he's got a pretty significant disfigurement, and he's a black dog. I had a dinner party here last week, and all my friends got to meet Lucho most of whom were horrified at the prospect of meeting him. Like, oh, I don't want to, oh. And everybody fell in love with him almost immediately. Within 15 minutes, everybody was saying how much they loved him and that they, it's not freaky to look at him. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, only one person was not, ultimately never, was not won over, and it was my friend Naomi's uh, nine-year-old son, Dash. He was not having it. He, looked, he was going to burst into tears the whole time. But his 11-year-old sister was all about it, begging me to keep Lucho. And adult men were literally breaking down and crying because they were so moved by him because he has this significant injury. It's completely healed. He has a significant injury and he still has the happiest, trusting spirit ever. Made everybody feel very humble in his presence. He's a great dog. He needs a home and he is going to be adopted out by Road Dogs and Rescue, R O A D. OGS on Instagram, Road Dogs and Rescue. They do. I do all my fostering for them, for her, Nikki, and that is the foster, the rescue that will be adopting dear Lucho out. He could use a bit of housebreaking. I can't tell. He doesn't know how to use a dog door, and I don't really want him using my dog door because he can jump little my dog gates that I keep my dogs contained with. He can jump them, and I don't like my dogs going in the yard when I'm not there with them because of coyotes. So I don't want him in the yard when I'm not with him. And if he learns to use the dog door, and he can jump the gate, could be a problemo. All right. Now I'm going to add, this is four tablespoons of minced ginger. I get my ginger in a jar. It's the easiest way to go. It's very finely minced. And so much easier than having to peel and grate fresh ginger. Mmm, ginger smells so good. All right. Now I'm going to add three tablespoons of brown sugar. Three tablespoons of brown sugar. Okay. To this I'm going to add a tablespoon of sriracha. Alright. I don't know what that sound effect was about. And two tablespoons of sambal olek, or you can use a chili paste. I don't like eggplant. 
And that is because, in my theory, I mean, some people just don't like eggplant. That's obviously true for some people. But I think most, pe many people who think they don't like it just don't like it the way they've had it. I think every, pretty much everybody likes eggplant parmesan because the eggplant's been cooked down to a mush. This will also be cooked down to kind of a mush. Indian food, eggplant's cooked down to a mush, and gr grilled eggplant is like got that grilling thing and it's mushy inside. It's when it has that, when you still has its original spongy texture, the eggplant is nasty. I don't like it either myself that way, but I love, I have many, many eggplant dishes on my blog. Several of them on this channel. It's a smoked Indian, like eggplant curry and a Bengan barda, etc. All right, to this I'm adding, Where's my molasses? Two tablespoons of molasses. Molasses, if you don't know. I like to add this, tri ask this trivia question, what are the ingredients of molasses? The trick answer is the ingredients of molasses is molasses. Molasses in, is in and of itself a thing. It is a byproduct of the production of sugar. All right, now I'm going to add two, three tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce. Call that one, two, three. Ooh, I'm running out of soy sauce. I, can you imagine I used all that soy sauce? It's kind of cray. All right. Now I'm going to add, I, have the, I found these little containers of tomato sauce. I love them. It's better to buy tomato sauce in cartons rather than in the cans because the acid in the tomatoes breaks through the lining of the can and then you get these PBAs or something bad in cans. <laughs> I forget what it's called, but canned tomatoes are bad. I still use them occasionally, um, but this is the way to go and it comes in a smaller container. So to this I'm adding, this in this is a cup of, half cup of this tomato sauce, one half cup of that mixed with half a cup of water. Now the first time I made this, I used one tablespoon of rice vinegar and one tablespoon of straight white vinegar. I'm not sure why I did that. I'm not going to do it again. I'm going to go with just straight two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar. One, two. Okay, and that's kind of it. I'm going to let it cook down and thicken. Doesn't seem to be as dark as the first time I made it. Maybe I used a dark molasses. This looks more like the color of the Indian dishes. If you want a darker color, you could add some black, tiny bit of black vinegar or a tiny bit of black or dark soy sauce. It's got a very inky quality to it and makes food look really dark and rich in color. All right, while this cooks down, I'm gonna tell you about something else I discovered. This little hinky, this little tiny, little tiny, tiny, tiny speaker. This is a Bluetooth speaker that can connect to your phone, your, I guess your Samsung or your iPhone, and it's a wireless speaker, and it's fantastic. So I think it's $40 or something, and you charge it, and you can play your music out loud without killing your, I guess it would still hurt your phone battery, huh? but the sound will be better. It's a nice quality sound. And also there's a trick on it. You push the button and it goes into phone mode. And somebody, the person who was distributing these came out to the bar the other night and was showing it to all of us and everybody freaked out and bought one, including myself. One of the features it does is you hit the button on the bottom two times and then hit it another time and your phone will take a picture. So I can remotely make my phone take a picture. I don't know why I would ever use that function. I don't know what that function's about, but it exists. Comes in a couple of colors. I got the rose gold. It comes in, I think, gold, rose gold, maybe silver, and black. Um, yeah, so there you have it. It's very cute. Good for traveling, so you can have in a hotel room or something. You can have your music playing and sound nice, and it takes up no fucking room in your, your suitcase. All right, I think I'm going to add a little dark sort of this. I'll be right back. Okay. Just for color, I'm going to add some of this black soy sauce. Let's just see. If I add one tablespoon, what will it do? Ooh, it's thick and inky. Yeah, I think I'm going to add just a little bit more. I don't want. I wanted to have the like a dark, rich eggplant color, like the color of eggplant skin almost. So I'm going to add another tablespoon. Ooh. That doesn't make it too salty. Black. All right. All right, 
And then the only other ingredient to add, this is optional, but I think it makes it lovely, actually is Thai basil. If you have access to Thai, any kind of Thai basil, sweet basil, hot basil, holy basil, all the Thai basils are great. I don't have Thai basil, I have this wilting sweet basil, regular basil from the supermarket that I made chiffonade. And I'm going to stir this in. Chiffonade simply means I took the big leaves and I rolled them up into like a like a joint and then cut them like this in little ribbons of basil. And it adds a nice fresh clean element to the dish. Now if you are somebody, you're trying to trick somebody into eating some eggplant and they don't want to eat it, you think they're not going to, they're going to give you some flack. You could use an immersion blender in here, or just a regular blender, and make it into just to a mush the way Bengen Barda is in Indian restaurants, so it's less identifiable as eggplant. And also, maybe some people object to the skins that are in here, the skin of the eggplant, because I didn't peel the eggplant first. So yeah, I think I would do a little immersion on that. And that's basically it. That is my recipe for vegan spicy Chinese eggplant. I would serve this with rice and I would garnish it with a little bit more basil and some, maybe some scallions or some more sesame seeds. And that is it. Somebody recently asked me why I don't eat the food on camera uh, really ever. I, the only time I really ever eat the food is when somebody else is cooking it and I have a guest and they cook something or if I'm doing a review. There's a couple of reasons why I don't eat it. Often it's the morning. It's like 9.30 in the morning. Right now it's not. What time is it? I don't know what time it is. It's like 1. But often it's early in the morning and I don't want to eat what I'm making. Other times I need to photograph it. If it's a baked thing, it needs to be intact. Uh, I want to photograph it before I dig into it. And sometimes I want to photograph it while it's still hot so it has steam in the photos. It's kind of a logistical thing. It's pretty tricky to do all this. On the one-man show here, I do everything by myself. Um, and often, uh, I'm also trying to lose weight all the time. And so, I don't want to ruin my dinner by nibbling on this stuff in the middle of the day. And Anyway, I do eat it though. Keep that, Know that. All this food that I make, I, I have to eat it myself. I often have dinner parties though. I made, when I made that recently, I made the eggplant casserole, the eggplant uh, cauliflower rice casserole. I served that at a dinner, dinner party that night. Um, it's another reason I don't want to cut into things. So, a myriad reasons. I don't really know what the benefit of watching you make you watch me eat it. I watch other p people with channels, and they eat, they make their food, and then they eat it. I've, for the most part, I've made these things before, so I know how they taste. A lot of times, I'm recycling recipes from my blog, and so it's not a mystery to me how things are going to taste. And eating is an awkward thing to I sit here chomp, chomp, chomp eating. So I always feel awkward when I do a, a review, and I'm chewing and swallowing and talking with my mouth full. I would like to see somebody, <laughs> uh, actually I did, I made, I made the smoked salmon, the, the carrot smoked salmon and the carrot hot dogs and I tasted those. I had never had them before and that was really an experiment and I tasted them on camera and I wasn't really blown away by them. I thought they took more work than was really worthwhile for the result that they, I got. Um, but I've never seen somebody like if I try, make a recipe and try their own recipe and go, oh my god, that's horrible, or oh my god, there's way too much salt, or it's overcooked, or it's burned. Nobody's ever tasted it and went, yuck. So I think you can assume that I'm going to eat this and I'm not going to say yuck. I'm telling you, you can assume that. And that is that. Okay, so wish me luck with Lucho. Hope we have, say little prayers for him that he finds a perfect, unbelievable home, the one, he one as good as he deserves, having gone through what he has. And uh, please follow me on Instagram. I post lots of stuff on Instagram, not just recipes. I post things about my career, things about my dogs, things about politics a little bit, all kinds of stuff. So I'm all over the map there, so not just food stuff. And that's it. Please subscribe and post, push the notification bell so that whenever I post a new recipe, you won't miss it because you'll get a little email saying that I posted it. And yeah, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Share these recipes with your friends. And uh, until next time, bye.